Hello and welcome to Atop the Fourth Wall, where bad comics burn. Been a few years since we talked about Solson Publications, so let's take a look at what actually a good chunk of the comics they produced were. Instructional books! A lot of them were guides for producing comic books. Publishing guides, writing guides, and a crap ton of how to draw boobs art comics. Yeah, admittedly I can't find covers for all these, but official lists include how to draw erotic witches and vampy vampires, how to draw fetish art, ultimate in sensuality. Oh good, I was worried that the amount of sensuality in the book would be below average. How to draw heavenly bodies, how to draw sexy women, how to draw sexy career women. I get the feeling that one's just reprinting how to draw sexy women, but includes the detail, put her in a pantsuit first. And of course, how to draw adult anime. And this was back in the day when anime wasn't more widely known. Now, of course, there's nothing wrong with them printing this kind of stuff. Porn and erotic art are fine. People should know by now my complaints in mainstream books are about them drawing art as if it was porn in non-porn stories. But I do find it very odd that despite printing all that kind of stuff, Salsa never actually produced a comic like that. The closest you got is Sultry Teenage Super Foxes, which really wasn't porn horny at all. It was just another Ninja Turtles ripoff with some goofy superhero stuff. Speaking of Ninja Turtles, however, that's where we get into the other instructional books they tended to publish. How to Draw the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, as well as the TMNT Authorized Martial Arts Training Manual. Now, it's entirely possible that they did get a license to print this, but somehow I doubt it. They did milk it for all it was worth, though, producing six of them. I think that makes it the longest-running comic that Solson ever produced. But hey, even if they weren't legal, nothing to worry about there. They don't need the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles to teach people this stuff. They have themselves a couple of comics to teach us all about ninjas and how they fight. And who better to teach us such things than the publishers of Reagan's Raiders? Let's dig into ninjutsu number one and number two. Now, like I said, these are not really comics in the traditional way. These aren't stories or even divided up into panels. And really, we're just looking for anything we can make fun of and snark on here. Basically, think of this like a comic book quickies, but focusing on two very silly comics. About ninjas. The cover for this first issue is... Simple, but not terrible, featuring one darker shaded ninja inside of a larger, lighter ninja. Honestly, the only thing that feels off about that is that there are a lot of detail lines on the mask and edges of the larger ninja that make it look like someone just inked over every line in a sketch instead of, like, doing proper inking on it. So it looks kind of rushed and sloppy. The art of the ninja! Okay, I know what they mean by that, but I'm just conjuring up this image in my head of a ninja painting a landscape like Bob Ross. The secret deadly fighting arts of the ninja! Revealed at last! Nobody has ever talked about ninja stuff before us! Only we, the publishers of sultry teenage super foxes, know their secrets! The Japanese writing here just says ninja and ninjutsu respectively, though apparently it's very sloppily written. So, points at least for it not saying something like chocolate defibrillator or something, because the artist thought that the characters looked cool without knowing what they meant. The title page shows us the initial meditation techniques of being a ninja. One method is to shave your head and become a Buddhist monk. Another is to become Chuck Norris. We'll never know what the third technique was because this dude is getting distracted by the giant floating eyes rapidly approaching. It's time to face your maker on the Muppet Show tonight. 
Oh, and in a bit of good self-promotion, on the other side of the comic is an advertisement for another Salson book, Codename Ninja. Learn the secrets of the ninja, so that you can make a schlocky comic book out of them. So, what are the origins of the ninja? Ninjutsu is a centuries-old martial art of feudal Japan, consisting of espionage, sabotage, and assassination. Ninja would infiltrate the enemy, gain valuable information, and sabotage the enemy's operations. Oftentimes, killing was a necessary part of the art of the invisible warrior! Well, these people are really bad at it, then, because I can see all of them. But hey, that's actually fairly accurate, so maybe this book is kind of factual? What do they have to say about ninja uniforms? In addition to wearing clothing that allows for ease of movement, it is also extremely important to blend into the surroundings. For that reason, ninja traditionally have worn black outfits to aid in their ability to conceal themselves. Yeah, I mean, black just blends in with everything seamlessly. You can't see it, but I'm actually wearing a big black poncho right now. It's like a frickin' cloaking device. And yeah, as is well known by now, no they didn't. Ninja, being spies and infiltrators and assassins and all, would more likely dress as civilians or monks or the like because wearing an all-black outfit all the time is kind of conspicuous. Sure, at night it might be functional, but I've heard dark blue actually works better for that. In modern times, ninja have taken to wearing camouflage uniforms, which later have been adapted for use in our armed forces. Oh, right, the army and its various platoons of ninjas. When the hell did that ever happen? American Ninja. Okay, carry on. I love how this implies that ninja are just a common thing that still exist, and ninjas in camouflage clothing. I'm pretty sure this comic got its ideas of ninjas from Godfrey Ho movies. Any second now, we're gonna see artwork of one of these guys wearing a big bandana that says ninja across it. Also, the writing is doing a weird thing. Like a Frank Miller comic, random words are bolded for emphasis, so I should really be reading it like this. In addition to wearing clothing that allows for ease of movement, it is also extremely important to blend into the surroundings. On top of that, sometimes the word NINJA is in all caps. Not all the time, but on this page it is. I kind of expected to see a little trademark symbol next to it, like Solson was trying to suggest that they owned the concept of a ninja. But hey, this is the art of invisibility, right? So, how do we do that? Well, it turns out apparently invisibility is elemental-based, via earth, air, fire, and wood. What I'm learning here is that Captain Planet was a ninja. The advice itself for remaining hidden and unseen is fine, it's just the metaphors to the elements are a little weird. Like air, for instance. Climbing a tree or other high object to avoid detection by becoming a part of that object. Much like a squirrel. Squirrels! They become part of a tree when they climb it. Also, climbing a tree equals air? So what the hell constitutes wood? Changing the form of one's body by use of special yogic exercises. Or just pass through Amagara Fault. Those holes were made for it. This changes one's silhouette and makes identification more difficult. You know, like... Wood. I'm a tree! The next couple pages are actually a meditation exercise involving breathing and moving your hands and fingers in certain ways. It's not terrible, and I could actually see it as something useful. Less so are the silent steps of the ninja, which according to this thing will make the ninja completely invisible. The first steps are to put your arms up like this in the caramel dancing pose. These steps are most often used to move in darkness. The ninja is also ready to attack immediately should the need arise. Pretty sure they're mistaking ninjas for bears trying to make themselves look big. The next step is just moving one leg behind the other when you're up against a wall and sneaking. And sometimes you need to go onto the ground and crawl around like a snake. From there, you need to learn to safely turn a corner by looking first and then climbing a wall by leaping at it backwards. The most efficient method of avoiding detection when climbing up walls is to do so with one's back against the wall. Seems to me that not looking where you're going and then falling like an idiot is going to attract more attention, but what do I know? I never made Samurai Santa. 
Oh, but you see, this involves years of great strength and practice to perfect this idiotic method of climbing walls. And then, if you're passing by an open doorway, you should push off your rear leg and cross the doorway in one smooth motion. After that, it's all about pivoting to avoid being caught by a sneak attack. And of course, for a demonstration of these techniques, the Ninja Style Dancer. So now you know how to move like a ninja, but let's see what tools ninjas have. Any unnecessary tools will just prove to be an encumbrance that could severely limit effectiveness. Well, just a suggestion here, maybe this would be going better if you weren't trying to do this in the middle of a blizzard. So naturally, your most important tool to talk about right away is a rope and grappling hook. This enables the ninja to climb walls that would otherwise be unscalable. Man, this ninja sucks. Just look at him. He's not even facing away from the wall. He's gonna be spotted immediately. A hollow reed can be used in order to breathe underwater. It is not recommended that you do this during a blizzard either. Then there's the ninja sword. I'm pretty sure it's just a katana. And because of its use for helping in climbing, it's not really considered a weapon like the next section talks about. The ninja has the ability to literally walk on water by the use of floating pots, or as they're apparently really called, ukidaru, which apparently were a real thing? I don't know, but I just have this image in my head of a ninja crossing a swamp all stealth-like, only to immediately be detected by how loud the things are when he actually steps on, like, the floor of a building or something. But anyway, yeah. Ninja weapons! Bow Staff, Nunchaku, Manriki Gusari, and the rest, apparently. The ninja has at his disposal a wide variety of weapons, none of which we could remember the names for. Actually, they do get into them, which makes me wonder if they just put that bit there because they realized there'd be a big blank space otherwise. The most popular throwing weapon of the ninja are the shuriken, also referred to as throwing stars. Right? It's my ninja star. This is yours! Ah, but now that you have the shurikens, you need to know the proper technique. Rapid fire tossing of them for tracking the enemy as they approach. And then at some point using the ninja steel coating them to transform into Power Rangers. Oh, and make sure you strike a pose after throwing them or else it's all a waste. But after a lesson in throwing darts, we get a repetition of information we already have because it's kind of struggling to think of new things to talk about. Ninja must be able to blend in with surrounding foliage, making it impossible to be detected by even the most observant enemy. He must also be able to adopt the form of objects he finds himself in contact with. Oh yeah, I mean, look at that. Him humping that steel beam means that he has adopted its form. So I guess adopting the form of an object just means make the YMCA poses around objects near you and hope your camouflage matches a tree. And what other useful information does this have? Often, the ninja must climb to avoid detection by placing himself above the normal eye level of his adversaries. Ninjas climb things. Essential information. There's only one writer for these issues, Peter Brody, but it honestly feels like multiple people were asked to give notes on ninja stuff to include, and they ended up using all of it even if it was redundant. Or at the very least, it feels like it hasn't been put together in order, like the concealing bits should have been together, but instead they're just haphazardly thrown in near the end. Next, it describes the art of escaping, followed by the next page, which is covert entry. Why are we learning how to escape before we learn how to get in? Space is warped. 
warped and time is bendable. Not that it's particularly great advice for escape. Blind people with powder, then throw Tetsubishi in their paths, so pursuers stab themselves when they try to run after you. Also, Tetsubishi doesn't have a hyphen in it. Back to entering, you might have to deal with guards as a ninja. How do you knock them out? Apparently with just one light smack to the side of their head. Again, a demonstration by the ninja style dancer. The fast draw is demonstrated. Basically the idea of trying to kill an opponent with a sword as quickly as possible with as few movements. That seems fine, which then leads to demonstrating unarmed combat. The modern ninja must be prepared to disarm a gun-wielding enemy. Oh yeah, I read about that in Modern Ninja Magazine. Here we see another ninja technique. We'll call this one the Three Stooges. And then after a little montage of various combat stances that ninja will employ, that's the end of the first comic. Seriously, no continued in issue two or in conclusion, ninjas are a land of contrast or anything. Just more ads for Salson comics like, uh, Samurai the 13th. Why the hell am I not reviewing that right now? Issue 2's cover is actually, I think, better than the first. The stronger full black for the outfit works better against the pure white background. Though I'm not sure what purpose the brighter sash serves in making the ninja invisible. The second issue has different artists than the first, and unfortunately that means set art has taken a bit of a step down in spots. It's not terrible, but I feel like the art in the first issue was just better executed. And while this issue retains the weird word emphasis, in some cases when they start a new paragraph they'll bold just the first letter, they've at least thought of more topics to cover. Namely, all of them being defensive actions. It starts off with unarmed defense against the sword. Shift your body to the left as the sword is thrust forward in an attempt to cut your abdomen. Focus your attention on the tip of the sword, not the attacker's hands. Are these really common problems that people will need these instructions for? There's also how to defend against an attack from the rear. Oh no! The wall has betrayed you! Oh hey, an ad for Sultry Teenage Super Foxes number one. Try it, just for the fun of it. If this company still existed, I would sue for false advertising. Anyway, after you defeat the attacker from the rear by pulling their leg, this random ninja outline has this advice for us. Always remember, the mind and body of the ninja are his most deadly weapons. I don't know, I'm pretty sure the stabby things are more deadly than your mind, dude. Wait, are ninjas supposed to have psychic powers? Oh, right, he's still unconscious. A lot of the advice for defenses against attackers in this comes down to shift to the side and grab them. But if the opponents are ninjas like we see here, wouldn't they know that and compensate? Also, in this bit down here for defense versus wrist grab, I know he's just pulling the guy's arm down, but it really looks like in this art that he's yanking the dude's shurikens, if you know what I mean. You know, for stuff that's supposed to be about ninjutsu, I just realized they kind of blew their load on anything really to do with ninjas in the first issue. I mean, when you get right down to it, ninjas are not exactly a complicated concept. Sneaky spies and assassins. Sure, there are some details you can get into for commonalities used in their techniques, but there's still not a lot to it. The second issue is less about ninjas and more just general self-defense advice. It's not bad advice either, and since it's all unarmed techniques, it's easier for anyone to use it. Hell, I joked about it before, but in the crouching counterattack, they specifically say to punch a dude in the dick. Anyway, we follow that up with how to defend against a rear bear hug attack. Once again, looks fine, though I question hitting the opponent with the back of your own head. Yeah, you see that in movies a lot, but it feels like you would do just as much damage to, you know, your own head by ramming it into someone else's. Being a ninja requires tremendous mind control. Holy crap, ninjas are psychic! The mind and spirit are the ninja's greatest weapons. This is not a contradiction from before or anything. Mind and spirit are its greatest weapons. Mind and body were its deadliest weapons. There's totally a difference. Up against a club attack? They got you covered too. Counter immediately with a paralyzing strike with your fist to the attacker's solar plexus. Wait, no, you just did the five point palm exploding heart technique instead. But wait, how about some 
combat secrets. Special combat techniques have been handed down through generations of ninja families. There are really a lot of ninja families out there, like ninja babies and ninja couples going out on ninja dates. Ninja must be able to defend themselves in unarmed combat, in addition to using all the weapons, which are generally thought of as synonymous with ninjutsu, the art of the ninja. Oh, good, I'm glad they finally told us what ninjutsu was. I've been confused this entire time what the hell I was reading. All of these aspects of the art of the ninja must be practiced daily in order to develop the skills necessary to be an effective and deadly knight warrior. Do you even ninja, bro? Defense against multiple punching attack. What the hell does that mean? Just someone going like... Defense against the double wrist grab ends with how they should totally strike someone on the back of the neck to finish him off. Which seems to be suggesting to me that this comic is telling you to kill people. And how does this thing even end after all this? Oh, with some takedown tips, which seem to be about putting an opponent down on the ground. And yet for some reason they decided to include artwork of a dude throwing a shuriken, even though the description specifically calls for close quarters combat. These comics... I hesitate to say they suck because it's not like there's some story here to critique, but they're not exactly great. It's a cash grab, really. Either make up or use some little tidbits about actual ninjas in order to profit off of anyone who's interested in material that's even remotely related to ninja stuff. It's clear that they ran out of ninja things to cover in the first issue, and were just trying to spin their wheels as best as they could. See what they could get out of this before they canned it for some other random goofy comic like The Amazing Wazoo. Both issues end abruptly with no closing statements relating to what they're talking about, and are really just more interested in illustrating a few martial martial arts moves and techniques instead of being anything actually interesting about ninjas. They're poorly edited, the art is okay, and words are just randomly given emphasis without rhyme or reason. It's just bad. Next time, back to Patreon-sponsored episodes as we take a look at a few issues of an attempt to take a villainous identity and turn it into an heroic one. Why is everybody in this comic a f***ing ninja? Hello my friends, please take a moment to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and click the bell for notifications on new video releases. If you'd like to support future videos, you can check out my Patreon or purchase a t-shirt via Teespring or Shark Robot. Thanks for watching!